You'll notice there's a slightly different look in the bench. That's because having had that explosively incendiary instant on my workbench, I tidied it enough to actually fit this in, which is a cutting mat. And the reason I've got this grey cutting mat is because someone sent me a generous gift of a pink cutting mat, which looks quite good in its own right. Uh, pink on one side, and hold on a second, and purple on the other, with uh, imperial metric measurements. Now, I'm going to keep that for special occasions, but I can't remember who actually sent it. YouTube lets me search the comments, but it doesn't let me search the messages, and I think it was uh, arranging the messages where they, they contacted me through that about the mat, and I, I haven't a clue what the name was, but they can let me know in the uh, comments. However, let's take a look at this, and also, uh, this isn't necessarily going to stay. If you guys prefer the existing bench, just let me know. But it's just, uh, I thought it was quite, uh, I mean, it's not even suitable for some of the things, particularly if they're going to go on fire. But um, it's just experimental. I think it looks quite interesting. I like the grey. I don't like the shininess at the back of these lights. Uh, but having said that, I suppose I could just zoom in to get rid of that. Mm. Anyway, let's get on with the task in hand, which is this marvellous device. Uh, uh, don't know if the correct word is marvellous. It's a wonderful auto on off light switch. So this is a uh, described. It's described as various things. Uh, the keywords for finding this and in internet. Let's zoom back out again. Actually, the keywords are auto on off photocell street light photo switch. And these are widely sold on eBay. Uh, this one came from, oh, I'm going to regret this, am I? Shenzhen3, yeah, just do a search the keywords, it's going to be so much easier. So, I'm not sure how this is designed to be mounted. It's a dusk sensor, it's designed to turn on street lights and general lighting. And it's clear that it's, you put a screw in the wall and then hook this on over, uh, and presumably that's a locking hole for putting another screw at the bottom, but then it's just sort of loose wires coming out. I'm not sure. I'm guessing that maybe in China they would just quite literally screw it in a wall and then just have like bits of terminal block or twisted wires next to it. But um, the only way you could really use this in the UK is if you put it in another, you know, enclosure with a clear cover on it. But uh, let's test this out. So the wiring colour code is following, I believe, the American colour code where black is live, uh, white is neutral and it switches over to the red, which is the load. So let's bring in the quick test and connect this up. Now, I want to mention uh, the quick test in European colours is available from various UK suppliers like CPC, Farnell, RS, Rapid Electronics, all the usual uh, British suppliers sell, sell it and likewise in Europe you'll find most electronic distributors have them. In America, a wee bit hard to get, now the colours are available in the American colours. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below because um, there's one person, Andrew, who's actually importing them into America uh, with the American Canadian colours, and uh, he's got a new stock in. So I'll put a link down below so you can get one of these if you want it, because they're very useful for mains connections. So let's uh, find something to connect with this. Let's uh, use it with the LED tape, because this would be perfect for bringing your LED tape on at night outside. So let's uh, strip these off. Is this going to be... The, it's twisting quite well. Is that copper? Maybe. Um, and I might actually crop these down length a little bit. I will crop them down length a bit, little bit because they're a bit long. So that's the load one. That's the live. And this is the neutral. So what I'm going to need here, I'm going to have to twist my neutral, which is blue, with the white. And I'm going to have to stuff it into the quick test. This, however, this isn't twisting too well. I think this is this aluminium cord wire, which is disappointing. I hope that doesn't take off too much, the aluminium cord wire. Aluminium has never been a great metal for electrical connections, and even the copper coating, I'm just a bit suspicious about it. So uh, I need to stuff that one in there. That's the live. I do hope this doesn't go bang. Secretly, you're hoping it does go bang. And what am I going to use to connect this? Where I had one. There we go. I'm going to use a Wago terminal. The Wago terminals, uh, very common in Europe, starting to go into America as well, I believe. Basically, you lift the little lever up, you put a wire in, they're commoning terminals, click it down, and that's your connection made. So very good for uh, fast wiring.
particularly when you use the Wago box. If you search my videos for W E W A G O Wago, you'll find a video about that. They're, they're great connectors. They're not that expensive. Get them from your local proper supplier. Don't buy the stuff from uh, China on eBay because the cost seems to be the same and I don't think they're genuine items. And when, you know, it's capable of handling quite a modest current, you don't really want to have dodgy items like that with the wiring. I said, Clive, wiring up uh, a dodgy Chinese item. So let's uh, turn this on and see what happens. Is this a good idea? It didn't go bang. Right, so theoretically, if I turn the light out, after a short delay, I may have to turn this light out as well. One. Oh, it lit fast and expected. Um, so if I turn, hold on, I'm just going to get a torch and just put some light in that. It's very sensitive. And it's only about a four second delay. I thought it would be longer than that. But at least it's got the delay. Right, I'm going to turn the red light on again. Right, so let's uh, open it up and take a look. I can hear a relay clicking. It's not a triac based one. And also I didn't see any afterglow suggesting it doesn't have a snubber network. Which is good because some of these things do have a snubber network over the relays. And uh, they cause that slight continued glow of LED lighting. So let's get this stuff out of the way and open that up. Any guesses what the circuitry might be? It could be as simple as a transistor um, and an LDR with a simple capacitive dropper circuit, which is probably going to be required for the, tra the relay uh, because it will have modest current. Unless it was a 240 volt relay, which I doubt. Um, uh, let's open it up. Make your guesses and I'll just zoom in on this and we'll just uh, get into this right now. So this screw comes out here. The bracket falls off. Is this going to be glued together? Or is that going to be it? No, it's coming off. Alright. Okay. So, what do I see here? Oh, there's a chip. There's an integrated circuit, which has the number on it. It's an NE555D. That's a very standard timer chip. That must be what's uh, doing the time delay. We've got a relay, we've got that capacitor, which I'm guessing is a capacitive dropper. What looks like a bridge rectifier, made of discrete diodes. Uh, the LDR some capacitors, probably one for smoothing the power supply. There's a Zener. Uh, right, okay, tell you what, I'm just going to reverse engineer this. I'll just be back in a moment. The reverse engineering is complete. I did it my usual way by taking a photo of one side of the circuit board and then taking a photo of the track side and flipping it so everything's sort of related. So for instance, that's the chip up there and that relates to the chip here. It just makes it easier. And then transfer the components across, just doodle onto it. And it makes the uh, circuitry very simple, actually. It's quite neat. I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit. So let's walk through this step by step. It's based around a 555 chip, which is a really common chip. I mean, it's so... It's literally a blast in the past. It's very odd. I got the data sheet and downloaded this. And it shows the data sheet was first made in 1973, Texas Instruments. And it was revised 2014, then it says some really weird stuff. Timing from microseconds to hours, I'm not sure about the hours. Uh, you'd have to use a sort of, you'd have to use either very stable capacitors or uh, a counter to actually get the hours. And it just basically, it's got a stable, monostable operation. Adjustable duty cycle, yep, TTL compatible output can sync a source up to 200 milliamps. And in this case, the TTL output, the high current output here, is used to switch the relay coil directly, which is a common thing with 555. And then it says applications, fingerprint biometrics, iris biometrics, and RFID reader. I can't think how you could possibly use it in those applications except to blink the power indicator LED. That's a bit odd. But anyway, 
let's take a look at it. What they're actually using it here is kind of like a, what you might call a Schmidt trigger and buffer driver. It's basically looking for a sort of upper threshold being reached and then a lower threshold being reached to actually toggle the output and then it's capable of driving high current. So it is basically just a sort of, almost like being used as a sort of level snap switch to turn the relay on and off. So let's start at the beginning. The mains comes in here and it goes to this capacitor, which is a dropper capacitor, 330 nanofarad, it's this yellow one here, X2, and it limits the current in each half cycle, and that means it's quite easy to derive a low voltage supply, although not isolated from the mains, but a low voltage supply to drive the relay coil, which is, this is the relay here. The current limited by the capacitor supply goes through this uh, bridge rectifier, I've just drawn a laser rectifier here. It's these four diodes here, discrete diodes, and the output then splits. The positive uh, goes to one end of the coil of the relay, but for the actual power supply, there's a limiting resistor, uh, the, a 100 ohm limiting resistor, and then there's a 12 volt Zener diode. And that just ba basically creates, with this uh, smoothing capacitor, 220 microfarad, it creates a nice smooth 12 volt DC supply for the circuitry. The... That supply is used to feed the chip. Uh, it goes to pin 8, which I think is the power for the chip. Is it not? Uh, yep, VCC, common collector, I'm guessing, in this instance. Uh, and it also goes to pin 4, which is the reset. Because it's not being used, it's actually tied high to uh, render it, to stop it actually resetting the chip. Not all the pins are using the chip, uh, notably the discharge pin, which is normally used for sort of flashing lights and timing functions, um, and also the control pin, which I think adds a slight decoupling capacitor usually, but isn't again isn't needed in this application. In this application, it's just got two buffers with an upper level and a lower level, uh, setting and resetting this latch and then buffering the output. So the two uh, inputs to those are these pins here, and they're connected to this capacitor, which uh, acts as a sort of time delay. So the light-dependent resistor, the photosensor here, and a 100k resistor form a sort of potential divider, so the voltage at that point will vary depending on the amount of light that's hitting this. When it's bright, this will be more conductive and it'll pull it down to the sort of low, the zero volt level. But when it's very dark, that resistor will, uh, the resistance of this light sense will go so high that that resistor then pulls it up to a, a higher voltage close to the 12 volt rail. And that then goes through this resistor, another 100k resistor, and uh, charges this capacitor up. And that creates a slight time delay. So this was quite a short time delay. It was only about three or four seconds. And you could change that by either increasing the value of that resistor or probably the easiest way to do it would be to increase the value of this capacitor. You could put, say, a 100 microfarad capacitor in if you wanted a longer delay to allow for, you know, clouds passing, or if it was in somewhere that street that uh, vehicle headlights could hit the sensor, then you might want a longer delay so that, you know, just light panning across, it didn't turn the lights off. But um, that causes that slight delay, and what you end up the with on this capacitor is a rising and falling voltage. And all that happens with the 555 chip is that uh, it uh, triggers on the upper level and triggers on the lower level. You can swap those around though. Um, and then that fires the relay. Now there's one oddity here. I would have thought that they would have had a diode across this relay to prevent the back EMF spike from uh, giving problems with 555. But maybe that's got a protection diodes built in. But I've always thought when, you know, you do that, you would put a diode across to suppress the back EMF spike off that. But uh, they haven't. Uh, so it's a very simple circuit. It's really odd and quite nice to see the 555 making an appearance because it is such a famous chip. It's, it goes back to the dawn of electronics that was one of the first integrated circuits. And, you know, it's so useful that you can still buy them today. You can buy packs of them from China and eBay. And I guess you can just buy them from your local electronic distributor too. So this capacitor here is the one you could change uh, if you wanted to make the delay longer. I'm quite tempted to actually do that right now. I should do that, shouldn't I? I'm going to change this to 100 microfarads and then we'll see how long it takes for the delay. So I'll be back in a moment.
the deed has been done. The 22 microfarad capacitor has been changed to 100 microfarad one, and rather than torture you by turning the light off now and then slowly counting to 25 seconds, because that's how long it took, uh, that's uh, I'll just tell you that, you know, it took 25 seconds before they come on. And likewise, when the light goes back on again, it takes about 10 or 15 seconds to go off. So there is scope to uh, increase that further, that delay, by uh, changing that capacitor. Or, where's the schematic? Or you could change this resistor here, which would also, by increasing that, probably, I think that's fairly low impedance, high impedance input, should I say, so you could possibly change that up to around about one mega ohm if you wanted for a really long delay time. You could also change the sensitivity to light by changing the value of this resistor here. It's quite hackable in a way. Likewise, if you just bridge out this yellow capacitor here, if you short it from one side to the other, or remove it and put a link in, theoretically the unit will operate on 12 volts. The only slight caveat there being that uh, this zener is a 12 volt zener, um, and if you went above 12 volts, say 14 volts, then you're going to get end up with this uh, zener turning on and 2 volts being dropped across this resistor here. Um, but uh, at 12 volts, uh, when it turns on, the current consumption uh, from the relay is only about 50 milliamps tops. So um, it's a fairly efficient little circuit. And because the relay contact has no snubber network across it, it is just, it's perfect for compact fluorescent or LED lamps because it won't do that thing where it leaks current through and causes a slight flickering. So it's a very neat circuit. It's really unusual to see the 555, but that's a, that's a, just shows the longevity of that particular product and its usefulness. But it's quite a smart little unit.